Hi everybody, this talk is about ring-based identity-based encryption, a synthetically shortened APK, and the title security. The authors are Parhat Abla, Fang Haoliu, Han Wang, and Zhedong Wang. I am Parhat Abla. The identity-based encryption is generalization of the public key encryption that the encryptor can encrypt a message under the receiver's uh, name or identity. The concept is first introduced by Shamir, and the construction, first construction is given by Bonnet and Franklin. The security is uh, similar to the public key encryption scheme that uh, in the IBE, the challenge uh, the adversary allowed to query uh, polynomially many identities and they get the uh, secret keys for the identities and the challenge for two messages under the challenge identity, which is not queried before and uh, receiving the cyber challenge ciphertext and it gets uh, which uh, message is encrypted under the challenge identity. Uh, this is a adaptive security notion. The construction under the uh, standard model uh, in the classic, uh, in the classic uh, assumptions, there's many uh, uh, constructions. Among them, the water's construction is very simple and efficient. They use the dual system encryption, but we don't know dual system from LWE or post quantum IBE as compared to SLFT IBEs. But uh, there's many tries to construct a lattice-based encryption, lattice-based IBE schemes uh, that is as compact as the selective secure one. Uh, the IBE that was a first construction is given by IBV10 which is adaptive security, and their master public key needs uh, lambda matrices. The currently the best uh, construction is given by Yamada, and, and the construction needs omega log lambda matrices in the public key. The Yamada's construction uses the bank zero, and that's the design is implicit. The natural question is, uh, can we construct a better uh, let this based IBE with more compact MP key and without using the bank pressure. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, that's uh, explicitly designed them. Uh, for the security for uh, adaptive IBE schemes, there's two techniques to uh, prove, prove the adaptive security of IBEs. The first is the with artificial report technique. Uh, in this technique, uh, the reduction will increase the running time by uh, one over epsilon squared. Uh, without the artificial technique, uh, the reduction can be removed, the running time blow up, but the advantage is uh, lose another epsilon. So another natural question is can we do better? Uh, for these two questions, uh, in this paper, we, uh, we give a better uh, ring-based, identity-based uh, IBE with more compact uh, MPK and a better security analysis for both with and without artificial support. That's our first uh, IBE design. Let's recap the IBB's uh, construction. In, the, in their construction, the master public key is consists of uh, L plus one matrices, A and B1 to BL. Uh, the key extraction algorithm uh, on input the ID and the master secret key. Uh, first com uh, computes the FID, like this, and using the sample left, using the TA, uh, the trapdoor of A, uh, to sample a, a, a Gaussian distribution vector, and that is the SKID. To simulate the k algorithm dot the master, master secret k, the simulator first replaces bi's with the uh, a times ri plus hi times g, a, a gsw type encoding, and compute fid like this. Uh, from this, we can see that if we let the second term uh, by a, a function, function of id and indexed by hi, yeah, indexed by L numbers HI. Then the computation of H FID is, uh, is, uh, is a homomorphic evaluation of this function. 
uh, given given the GSW encoding of this one, uh, encoding of the hash function, the index of the hash function, and compute the, uh, this hash function. And another require from this hash function is that uh, we we want this hash function uh, part partition the identity space. That means uh, partition uh, each ID star for the challenge identity is equal to zero. And for other identities, uh, the hash function, uh, hash of that ID is not zero. Uh, to satisfy these two uh, requirements, uh, Yamaha does design the hash function like this, A times ID plus B mod A row. Uh, A, B rows are omega log lambda bits. And, this, uh, and it shows that this hash function is uh, a partition function. Uh, besides, and the, but the homomorphic evaluation of this function uh, needs Barrington theorem. So now we show that uh, improve this uh, hash function. We design a hash function, a new hash function uh, that's only need omega log one ring vectors because uh, the Yamada scheme needs omega log lambda bits and encode eight bits. So the master the public gains the Yamada scheme needs omega log lambda ring vectors or matrix. So improve them. Let's see our design. Uh, first of all, we let's see a result from FL, AFL. They say that if a hash function uh, satisfies uh, two probability uh, properties, the first is hash of x is equal to zero. Uh, this probability is one over a. And the condition probability for two x, y, x, different x, y, x, two, the condition uh, probability is equal uh, smaller than one over b, where a is larger than b, and b is larger than q. Then uh, there is a partitioning. The hash function will partition the x, uh, and uh, the x is in the q uh, with a noticeable probability. That is a, uh, a different definition of the partitioning. So our goal is to construct a hash function with above properties. That means uh, A, B is large enough to uh, larger than a polynomial Q, any polynomial Q. Uh, let's see a basic design. For the basic design, the hash of a Z, the input Z, uh, which might be a identity in the identity-based encryption. It's a ECC of Z, which is a vector, and we choose a randomly choose an R fast place, and minus a beta a random uh, element in ZP. So it's uh, easy to see that for any Z, the probability of HZ equals to zero is equals to one over P. And the condition probability for any different Z1, Z2, is smaller than one minus epsilon, where epsilon is the relative distance of the ECC, the error correcting code. It's obvious that uh, this hash function is not uh, satisfies the requirements of lemma one, because the p is very small. It's not larger than any polynomial. So a, a intuitive construction is that parallel rep repeating the basic hash for t times, so repeating the t times, we have a hash function, a repetition, a repetitional hash function, uh, which is h of the repetitional hash function of j is uh, equal, uh, j equals to zero. The probability is equals to one over p to t, and the conditional probability also as smaller than one minus epsilon to t. Uh, because if we set the t to a, a large enough, so we can uh, this. Uh, these two probabilities is satisfied for the lemma one, but the the vector we designed for the hash function output of hash function is not compatible uh, with the rings or the design of IPE. So we embed this uh, repetition function into a ring vector like this. We embed the vector into the exponent of x, so we just say one to one. And we have a, the probabilities are straight. So it's a, this embedding is we embed a vector into a one ring element with small coefficients, uh, which is uh, invertible by the design. 
and this kind of design is satisf uh, satisfies the requirements for lemma one. And the a, this is uh, p times two is large enough to larger than any polynomial q. If we said that p is uh, almost equal to n squared and t equals to omega one. So our second uh, goal is to homomorphically evaluate this hash function. Uh, to evaluate this hash function, uh, we rewrite our the final ring hash function like this. Uh, we write the second term to the, to here, and the first term we rewrite the first term like this. If j is equals to alpha i, then this j becomes alpha i, and this is equal to this one. If j not equals to alpha i, now then this term is equals to zero, and the old term is equal, and the sum is uh, not relevant to the previous one. So now we want to homomorphically evaluate this hash function. Uh, if if you are given the uh, in, uh, encoding of the index of the hash function alpha and beta, we want to homomorphically evaluate this one, and the z is integer. So first of all, if we given the encoding of uh, beta i like this. Then we can homomorphically evaluate the first term by the addi addition property of the GSW type encoding. And then and we show that if we given the encoding of uh, this equality test, j equals to gamma alpha i, because i and j is in clear, so this term is in clear, so we only need to homomorphically evaluate this term. If we given the uh, homomorphic evaluation of this term, then we can homomorphically evaluate whole hash function. So our goal is to give the encoding of alpha i, which is indexing the hash function, and j, which is integer, and we want to homomorphically evaluate j, uh, whether it's a j equals to alpha i. We call this the homomorphic evaluation case. And uh, for this goal, the previous approach uh, used the bitwise comparison. Uh, they decompose alpha, uh, as a bitwise, alpha one to alpha, alpha t, and bitwise compare with j like this. So this approach needs omega log alpha for a uh, encoding of each bit of the alpha, for each bit of alpha i encoding this one, and homomorphically evaluate this one, and homomorphically uh, compute the multiplication of GSW type encoding. So this, uh, this, this approach needs log, uh, log n ring vectors to encode alpha. So uh, we think, we can, can we do better? So we have an observation for the ring R, because it's x to, to the n plus one. If the a, f, x, a, if f is equal to this, uh, this polynomial, I want to v to the v to the m to one, m minus one, if v equals to one, then this uh, m terms, so it's equals to m. If v not equals to one, then the term is equal, uh, the numerator is equals to zero, and denominator is not zero, so the whole term is equals to zero. If, if we evaluate the, uh, the function at x to the i, then if x equals to zero, which means x to the i equals to one, so the, the, the uh, function variable is equals to m, and if i not equals to i, then v not equals the one, and the, the function value is not uh, equals to zero. So observing this one, uh, if if you are given the encoding of f x to the alpha minus j, the encoding of GSW encoding of this one, so we can uh, we can homomorphically evaluate this uh, polynomial, and we got the encoding of this one. So uh, multiplying a uh, homomorphically multiplying m inverse, so we get uh, the homomorphic testing of j and alpha i. This testing is only needs one encoding, only encoding of this one. We don't need a bitwise encoding of uh, alpha. So our testing is like this. Given the encoding of alpha, which is in the zn, and j in the clear, so we first compute the x to the alpha uh, minus one, encoding of this one, by encoding of x to the alpha times x to the minus j, uh, because j is integer. 
and then compute uh, homomorphically uh, evaluate the f function and we got the encoding of this one uh, and then we compute the m m inverse oh that might be m inverse so here and we got uh, we got this one if j is equals to alpha then this term equals to zero and the and the x to the zero is equals to one and the f function at uh, the the evaluation of f this one equals to m and the computing by m to the inverse which equals the encoding of one otherwise it was encoding of zero so we perfected on the homomorphic uh, evaluation so now we finished the homomorphic evaluation of our hash function and the designing of hash function so by the way we we see the uh, application of this, this type of uh, equality testing given the encoding of x to the alpha uh, we want to unpack that was, it must be you know, unpack for alpha and we got every encoding of alpha by homomorphic evaluating b and uh, j where j is the uh, uh, i bit of the j is east one so in this type if uh, if the i bit of alpha is one then there's one j is equal to alpha and we got this homomorphic correlation equals to one and the whole addition will get the encoding of one. Uh, if the encoding is with zero, then uh, each uh, evaluation of this one all gets a encoding of zero and, and the sum equals, uh, will get a encoding of zero. And we get a packing, given the encoding of every alpha i, we can pack, uh, pack them to get a encoding of alpha like this. A straight, uh, a straight uh, application of this encoding is that we can improve the MPK size of the IPE in Yamada for by a factor of log lambda straightly. So this is an, another uh, application. So let's see our uh, construction. The construction is, is uh, very similar to the previous constructions. Trapped and construct the A and the GA, the trapper of A, and then uh, generate the BI, the T and the where say eta is a, some kind of stand and the t uh, vectors like this and msk is the ta k generation and the hom uh, homomorphically evaluate the uh, hash function this is a circuit of uh, hash function circuit and then uh, sam using sample left uh, ta is the trapdoor and you get a r which is a uh, lattice uh, as a Gaussian distribution vector on the lattice, and the R is a secret key. The encryption is the dual regular encryption, that is the BI, I compute the FID uh, in, in encryption, uh, and then compute the BI, BID using a public evaluation of FID, which is similar to the previous uh, K generation algorithm. And then I use the uh, dual encryption to comp uh, encrypt the message new. A decryption is uh, similar to the dual regular encryption. So that is our design. Uh, next, we see our. Oh, so our, our there's a t is we got the t is uh, equals to omega one. So our design only needs omega one uh, ring vectors. So let's next see uh, our uh, better security analysis. Here we recall a bit security framework of uh, Mixenso and Walter, where uh, where we allow the adversary output set a bot. He can abort the mess uh, the whole game, which is different from the previous uh, previous security analysis. And uh, if that alpha is a non-aborting probability and beta is a, a conditional success probability. Then the advantage of the adversary is epsilon equals to alpha times two, uh, two beta minus one squared. Uh, there is a, a, a theorem given uh, that if, uh, which is very intuitively it's correct uh, in the statistical distance, that if we replace a uh, distribution P with a Q, then the output, uh, the non-abort probability is uh, not affected by P. And uh, 
uh, the success probability are also very close to the previous beta under the distribution P. This is very important in our security analysis. And let's see the security analysis. For say, game one is original game, and the probability is alpha zero and alpha one. Okay, game one, in the game one, the challenger choose a random partition of function H uh, by random indexing. With the, uh, the challenger may use a, as an artificial technique or without artificial abort technique. Uh, with the lambda file is uh, the estimation of uh, gamma. The gamma is a partitioning probability. Uh, let's just uh, skip this uh, analysis for a moment. Uh, for game one to game, uh, game one to game three, game two, uh, we use a hash left or hash lemma because we replace the BIJ with the JSW encoding and which is statistically close. Uh, game two to game three, we use a le sample left to sample right uh, because, uh, because we can compute RID by a trap eval because we have uh, RIJs and uh, the hash function and R5 beta, the challenger knows all, the, all these steps, so you can check it well this one and get RID. And compute the SKD using uh, sample left, using the RID, which is, uh, uh, this is a secret idea for, uh, for, for, uh, for the matrix, a chapter for the matrix. And uh, we know that then the simula simulator uh, can simulate the KGN without the MS MSK. Uh, game four is uh, using the re-rand algorithm uh, by the uh, hash function, because the hash function, uh, hash value of uh, HID star is equals to zero, and the randomized uh, properties of the re-rand, we can get that the game Game three and game two is uh, statistically close. And game, because uh, we replace the C1 with a random uh, random element by the random uh, randomness of real W, this uh, game four and game three is closed. So we got game one to game four is closed. So let's come back to game zero to game one. That, that gamma is equals to the uh, partitioning probability. Uh, we, get, uh, we have a lemma which says that alpha one, which is a uh, non-abort probability at game one, is larger than gamma mean, which is a, a lower bound of the estimation of gamma, times a alpha zero. And the beta one is larger than the ratio gamma mean over gamma max, gamma max is the upper bound of estimation of gamma times the beta one. So if that the gamma mean uh, over gamma max is equal to one over one minus delta zero over four, then epsilon one is equal to, uh, is uh, larger than epsilon zero times gamma mean over four. Where gamma zero is equal to uh, two times beta zero minus one. So we get this one. And if the challenger uses this artificial technique and set gamma mean, the lower bound of the estimation of gamma equals to one over two Q and gamma max is one over Q. So the ratio is one over two. Uh, if we want to, to increase this ratio to this one, we need a one over delta square, delta zero square samples by kernel bound, and which is smaller than one over epsilon zero. And the, epsilon, the previous reductions need one over epsilon zero square. So over reduction, if you're using this uh, artificial abort technique, over reduction is better than previous reductions. If the challenge is without artificial technique uh, and set the uh, gamma mean and, uh, over gamma max is uh, the delta zero over four Q, then the ratio is exactly what we wanted, uh, but the reduction will lose uh, delta zero because the previous uh, epsilon one is larger than the gamma mean times epsilon zero. But the previous, uh, comparing with the previous reductions, the factor is uh, epsilon zero and our factor is epsilon zero squared. So our reduction is better. So in this paper, we gave a better 
uh, IBS scheme with better master public case and explicitly design and a better uh, reduction. So thank you. Thank you for time.